Hey everybody, this is Mr. Munson. We're looking at Unit 7, still in Unit 7, right triangles. Uh, today's section is 7.2 uh, in our concepts, and we're looking at special triangles. And so uh, this picture actually depicts both of the two special triangles we're going to be looking at, a 30-60-90 and a 45-45-90. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so hopefully you've done your vocabulary already from 6.1. We're going to look at uh, two specific pieces of our vocabulary today. We're going to be looking at the 45-45-90 triangle and the 30-60-90 triangle. So uh, if you have not gotten your vocabulary words written down, you want to go back to um, video 7.1 and get that taken care of. Let's move on. Here's a short list of um, ideas that you'll need to make sure that you know how to do by the time you get this video done. I can reduce radical expressions. I can simplify operations with radical and solve radical equations. I can find missing side lengths for a 30-60-90 triangle as well as for a 45-45-90 triangle and then certainly be able to use that special triangle idea in real world kind of problems. As a continued desire to make sure that you know how to do reducing radicals, I'm giving you some more chances here. Uh, each problem, you're just going to put me on pause, try to do the problem on your own, come back and check your work. So uh, I'm going to do example one here. Feel free to put me on pause. So as I've said before, I, I create two radical symbols like that, and I go looking for a perfect square that goes into 27. Certainly 9 uh, produces that for me, so then I simplify. And there I have it. No other perfect squares underneath the radical. Let's move on to example number two. Feel free to put me on pause and do this one on your own. All right, next one. If you're not sure what I did here, then it's your responsibility to go back and watch my Reducing Radicals video, and I'll go through a quick explanation of that. Let's go to the next one. Now, before I walk away from this one, I think there's a perfect square like 9 that goes into that 18 there, so I'm going to simplify that. I always find it's important to keep things neat. If you don't have enough room to work, then things start getting messy. And once again, as I've said in class, um, I could take this number and this number, plug them both into my calculator, make sure I use parentheses because I'm looking at denominators in the top part put parentheses around everything on top, divided by the thing on the bottom, and see if they turn out to be the same decimal. All right, so make sure you know how to do those kind of problems. Let's move on. How about using radicals and equations? Let's uh, do our cross-multiplication and problems like this, see if we can work these. Put me on pause, check your work. Okay, and the 3 and the 5, which are both outside radicals, there's nothing that they have in common, so I can't do any cancellation on that. And uh, square root 2, there's no perfect squares underneath the radicals, so this is a perfectly legitimate answer. Let's go on to example number 6. Certainly, those two square roots of twos cancel out, and I end up with x equals 7. Okay? And can an equation kind of problem, how to check it is I plug it back in and see if the left side and the right side actually do end up being the same number. Okay? All right, let's move on. All right, let's take a real quick um, refresher course of similar triangles. So, looking at these two triangles, I need to ask myself first of all, are they similar? So to do that, I have uh, three shortcuts that I learned back in Unit 5. You have the angle-angle similarity, side-angle-side similarity, and side-side-side similarity. Okay? So I'll let you go back and review that video if you're not sure what those are. So I'm looking to apply one of those shortcuts to this triangle. So since I don't have all the sides to the green triangle over here, I can't use side-side-side set side, because side, I have to write a ratio between... Uh, each pair of corresponding sides and then compare those ratios to make sure that they're equal to each other. I can't do side angle side because I don't have the another, I need one more side on this side, okay? But also, um, I'm not sure if I even have a congruent angle 
that middle angle there in the side angle side. I don't have a, an angle that's congruent, or do I? Let's stop for a second and see if we can do some quick calculations. We know from the triangle sum theorem that the missing angle here has to be um, added to the 90 and the 30 to get um, 180, okay? Um, also, we know that those two angles have to, these two angles here have to add together to give me 90 since 90 of it has already been spent. So when I'm doing these kind of problems, I don't simply do the 180. I just look to see what do I have to add to that 30 to get 90, okay? And so in this case, what do I have to add to 60 to get 90? And that is 30 degrees, okay? So actually, we have a set of angles that are congruent. Um, we are, uh, so we can use um, angle, angle, side to say the two triangles are congruent. And since they're congruent, or not congruent, I'm sorry, similar. Since they're similar, since the triangles are similar, the sides become proportional, right? All right, that means I can write ratios between the sides, and that means I can also write proportions. That means I can write equations. So let's go ahead and see if we can figure out what the missing sides are on my ABC triangle. And actually, let's pause for a second, and let's see if we can write a, a similarity statement. Just to review that part. So we have the two triangle names, and I'm going to look for their similarity. So I'm going to match up angles and write it in the correct order. So you go ahead and put me on pause. See if you get this uh, written down correctly. We'll start with triangle ABC on this side in alphabetical order, and then you match it up to the black triangle. Okay, so I got GFE. The reason that those are not in alphabetical order is so the ABC goes from the 30 to the 90, to the 60, that's the order of them. So I'm going to follow that same order here, 30, 90, 60, GFE, okay? All right, so let's go ahead and write a proportion. See if we can solve for, let's say, AB, okay? Go ahead and write your proportion. See if you can do that. Put me on pause, come back and check your work. All right, so I got AB is equal to 7 squared root 3. Uh, again, from my reducing radicals video, uh, the square root symbol, the number that's under the square root, always goes last. All right, let's go say if we can find um, AC. All right, so since I've already found um, a set of corresponding sides that are number over a number, I'm going to use that same number, set of numbers again. Cross multiply, and I end up with AC being 14. Okay? All right, cool. So this triangle here is going to be one of our, what we call special triangles. That triangle right there, you're going to memorize the sides, one, two, square roots of three. And anytime I give you a 30, 60, 90 triangle, you're going to bring that triangle into the problem on your own. Okay? So you have to memorize it. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So this is our special triangle for 30, 60, 90. I'm going to put the sides on it. So we know that um, square root of 3 is approximately 1.73 something, okay? So that's not quite as big as 2, so we need to make sure that we put 2 on the hypotenuse. 1 being the smallest side is going to go across from the 30, the smallest angle, right? And then, um, and then the square root of uh, 3 goes over on the medium size angle. So there you have it. This is our 3069 triangle. This is one you're going to have to memorize where the sides go, what those numbers are, and this is going to be the reference triangle for every 3069 triangle that you get. So in the problems that you're going to experience in this chapter, I'm only give you, going to give you one triangle. And then I'm going to ask you to find the other sides. You can't use Pythagorean theorem because there's a missing side there. You need to have at least two. So you have to bring in your special triangle. So I'm put, go ahead and put me on pause. See if you can draw your 30, 60, 90 triangle for this problem without looking back at your notes. And uh, set it up correctly. And then start writing proportions. So when you're ready, if you need help, come back and watch my video. Or check yourself. Do the work on your own. Okay. There we have it. Let's move on. Try your hand at this one, KL. I always draw my reference triangle to look like the problem that I'm given. And I rotate it, whatever I need to do, so I can just easily line up the pieces. Okay, so there's K. Let's work on, well, I mean, this is L that I just found. <laughs> Let me change that. All right, let's find K. And there you have it. 
Okay, let's move on. All right, here we have uh, 1, 1 square roots of 2 are the sides that go with the 45, 45, 90 triangle. Just take a quick second. Go ahead and place those sides in the correct place. Put me on pause, get everything drawn up, and then we'll move on. I want to see if you understand how those pieces have to fit in a certain place. Lots of reasons why they have to go in this place. First of all, square root of 2 is uh, one approximately 1.41 something. So it's definitely larger than the ones. And the hypotenuse in a right triangle is always bigger, the biggest side. So it has to go there. The other reason is that since those two sides are congruent, one and one, then the, they go across from the congruent angles. Okay? All right, so let's take a look at this problem. See, a, a leg of an isosceles right triangle is forty or is six is six is six. Find the other length or the other leg in the hypotenuse. Okay, so let's draw some pictures. First of all, it's an isosceles right triangle. So there's my isosceles right triangle. Then uh, one of the legs, and the legs are always the sides that go with the um, the right angle. They wrap the right angle, right? So we'll put the six on the. It says find the other length of the side. Okay, so we can't use Pythagorean theorem yet, but uh, since this side is 6, we know this side is 6. Okay, that's just by the fact they're con being congruent. Now, at this point, I could use Pythagorean theorem. So, um, you're welcome to do that. Although, for our practice for this um, example, I want you to use your reference triangle 45, 45, 90 to set up proportions and all that stuff so we can get lots of work with it. And that's going to be true for all the problems in this section. Even though you might see a, a way of using Pythagorean theorem, steer towards using your, your reference triangles so you get practice with them. All right, so we definitely can easily find 6 without a proportion or even Pythagorean theorem. The fact is that it's going to be congruent, so we just go ahead and write x is equal 6. Let's look at finding y. And there you have it. Now, as you work through these problems, you might start seeing some patterns that allow you to, to anticipate what the answers are. Um, I'm going to encourage you to use your proportions so that you're working with radicals and, and just manipulating it so you're getting the practice with that. As soon as it gets hard, most people who start seeing a pattern and only use the patterns, it falls apart. They can't do the hard problems because they don't know how to set up the equations, and that's what I need you to practice doing. All right, next up, let's take a look at this real-world problem. Got a guy walking dog. He's a 30-degree angle to the top of the um, the, the uh, electric pole and a tree that creates a 45-degree angle, and we want to find H, okay? So we're given the hypotenuse of the 45, so what we're going to have to do is use our problem-solving skills. I want you to put me on pause uh, if you're uh, so inclined. I want you to put me on pause, see if you can do this problem, work it out, figure out what it is that you need to find, start finding the pieces to this triangle. Then come back and look for my work, and it might just be a hint where you just need to see the hint, and then you can work on it on your own, um, or maybe you need to see the whole thing. Let's get started. Well, first I need my reference triangles, so I'm going to bring those in real quick. Okay, and then I'm going to see what I can find. Well, from using this reference triangle, the 4545, I could possibly find how high this piece is. Let's call this piece K over here. Of course, the reason why I'm thinking if I could find that K, if I could find that one number right there, I can use my reference triangle for the 30 to find that H. So once I have one side of a, one of my special triangles, I can find all the other sides as long as I use my reference triangles to help me do that. So I used my reference triangle for the 45, 45 and matched up the corresponding sides to set up this equation. So I'm going to kind of smooth this out. I'm not allowed to have radicals in the denominator. And so that's what my K looks like. Not nice, but definitely workable. Okay? So I'm going to put it up on K. I'm going to kind of erase my work here, but keep my reference triangles. I'm going to see if I can set up an equation to find H. All right, so H lies on my special triangle, which is the 30, 60, 90. So H goes to 2 in my reference triangle. And there you have it. A fraction with a fraction in it. No problem. See it as four pieces. See this piece as one piece, okay? So we're going to cross multiply, and it's no worries. Just train your eye to kind of delete that stuff out. So I have h square roots of 3. 
course, the 2 is going to cancel off on the left side. That's multiplying by a division of 2, so those cancel out. Just doing it slow and peacefully, right? No worries. Okay. And I'm not allowed to have a radical 3 in the denominator. So I'll multiply top and bottom by that radical 3. And I end up with 25, 3 in the denominator. Square root of 2 times square root of 3 is square root of 6. The 6 is inside the radical, so it can't play with the 3. No factors of 3 go into 25. So, wow, there's your answer. Okay? All right. Now, I know that's probably a tough problem. That's why I did it for you and showed you. Hopefully, you don't have to end up with crazy things like that, but you've seen some work with the 30, 60, 90 triangle in the same uh, picture and also using a reference triangle, but also working with radicals, which you desperately need help with most likely. So, hopefully, you saw something that was helpful. All right, so here's your homework, okay? Make sure you're circling answers. Show equations in your work for every one of these problems. Leave your answers in simplified radical form, okay? Make sure it's neat and organized. Lots of work. Put your drawings into your homework. I'm starting to see just copied homework, and that you can get all the points out of me you want out of that, but that's not going to help you in the sense of creating a study guide or getting um, an understanding of what you're to do, okay? That's it. Good job. You've made it this far. Let's move on. Have a great week.